Namaste. Um, I'm Bonnie, and this practice is going to be focused on Ahana and Prana. Ahana and Prana. The forces of wind, earth, and the upward and downward motion of these forces. Vayu. Prana Vayu, Ahana Vayu. The um, prana relates to the chest. It governs our intake of inspiration, propulsion, or momentum. Upana at the pelvis governs elimination, downward movement. Samana at the navel, assimilation, discernment, inner absorption, consolidation, growth, speech. Um, at the throat, Udhyana, Udhana, speech, ascension, upward movement, and then Vyana, the whole body, governs circulation on all levels, all levels, expansiveness and pervasiveness. Upana, Vayu, is the downwind, the feminine aspects of the earth, the energy in the earth's nature. And then the prana value is the upwards motion, the energy of the masculine, the sky. The upana can leave us stuck if we leave it in the lower chakras. Okay, so now let's get this so Bring yourself into easy pose. Make sure you have a chair. It can be any kind of chair. I have this fancy little chair, but whatever chair is comfortable for you. Um, we'll, be, we'll be putting our feet in the chair. Um, the chair, then we'll be um, using the chair to sit on. So any kind of chair is perfectly fine. And to begin tonight, um, to begin, bring your hands into Teha Mudra, which looks like this. You touch the thumb and the forefinger together, and the other fingers are open. And just let that settle right under like your heart space, tuck the elbows in. And take a few breaths here. Inhaling, expanding your belly, and exhaling, allowing the belly to um, fall softly. This kind of almost forms like a new heart as your thumbs come together. So make sure the thumbs come together. This one is very good for. Um, Inner light, focus, radiance, directs the breath to the heart, to the chest, and the ribs, assists through the immune system, and uplifts energy, heart conditions, and hypertension, lose caution. I embrace the radiant brilliance of my loving heart. Namaste. My name is Bonnie Lynn Sandra, and I'm from Heart Soul Yoga Therapy. And we'll be on mass. Tonight's practice will be focused on um, prana and apana. Prana body and apana body. To begin, please bring your hands together in Tana Mudra. We're going to touch the thumbs together, the second fingers, and then the um, other fingers just kind of open up. This mudra is great for supporting the function of the immune system. The heart chakra is a volunteer. It's brilliant. It's a brilliant energy that comes with this mudra. When you have this mudra engaged, maybe you're thinking in mind, I shine with brilliance in my heart space. My heart is filled with love. Think of your heart as a brilliant jewel, a gem. Beautiful, tender heart. So with this mudra, just allow yourself to start to go within. Softly close your eyes, or maybe a gentle gaze. Inhaling into the heart, exhaling. Inhaling prana, letting it travel down the shashuna, the spinal column, 
and then exhaling up high, bringing that up out. Inhaling, exhaling, and feeling the, the brilliance of this mudra, which can help bring in some confidence. Confidence, confidence in that. It's a really, really nice one. Now bring your hands to Anjali, prayer, mudra, reverence, and for a moment, Push the, the thumbs into the sternum. Follow that sensation. Let your energy follow the sensation right into your beautiful heart space. And feel your own heart. Know that the truth lives in our hearts. Let that be present for you in this moment. Think of a moment when you felt so much joy, and so much love. It's just a lightness in your Embrace that moment. Wrap yourself in the cocoon of that joyful moment. Maybe you were with a loved one at a park or the ocean or a mountain. Wherever it is, you felt so beautiful joy. And let that joy just wrap around you. Let yourself be in a bubble of brilliant, light joy. And for a moment, reflect on a time when it felt energy felt heavy and stuck almost as if you couldn't move from the earth. And notice that. And try not to judge. It, I get shiny when I say that the brilliance of the, um, the heart chakra being light, because it ultimately we want to be light and not stuck. Um, in the anahata or unstruck chakra, you know, there is a fairness in there. But without judgment, bring yourself to a moment when, when you felt a little dull, and, and it was that dull moment, that stuck moment. And knowing that, that going through the stuck moment brought you to the moment of brilliance, of the unstuck moment of that um, brilliance, of that freedom. I'm sure you've heard of the no mud, no lotus um, saying. So without the mud, without the gunk, without the stuckness, you know, the beautiful light um, doesn't happen. It's the silence between the notes that makes the music. So the pause. So allow yourself during this practice to take a pause, to use your breath, to know that you may get stuck and it's okay, and you may find yourself feeling lighter. It's all good. We're on a journey. Let's um, om together. Let's add in the shanti shanti. So let's say om shanti shanti om. Breathing in, exhaling, breathing in, and then the little mantra. Breath in, exhale. Om Shanti, Shanti, Om. Uniting us all together in a peaceful way. Let your hands fall towards your legs. Let them rise soft and gently. And notice the touch of your hands on your legs. And maybe notice that that's a little bit vulnerable. That touch may feel vulnerable to you. And then let that touch feel warm and, and real. Touch is powerful. Inhale your hands back to your heart center. Feel what's present for you and true in your heart space. Inhale, and then exhale your hands back to your legs. Soft landing. Let your fingers melt into the legs. Notice the touch. Notice the warmth that lives there. And that vulnerability, that, that dullness that can come if we stay stuck in that moment. Acknowledging what's present, but at the same time, inhaling, lifting away, and lightening up, coming to our highest space. Throughout the practice today, please continue to use a giant breath, inhaling to a nice, expansive belly, and exhaling to condense. Inhaling, filling up with prana, exhaling. Um, please come to your back and bring your feet onto your chair. Whatever chair you have. Settle yourself comfortably on the earth. 
You have to tuck your, your shoulders in, let your shoulder blades feel the earth. And then bring your um, thumbs and second finger together, the index finger. And let this triangle mudra represent for a moment the front triangle of the pelvis. That would be like this. And then the back triangle. And start to undulate your hands. And just notice your fingers. Maybe you flutter them a little. Inhale and exhale. So eventually these fingers are going to land on the belly. And this is mimicking what the pelvis is going to do, the pelvic floor, where we can get stuck, where that apana can, can just kind of make us feel heavy. So let's play with that for a while. Inhale, exhale, let your hands gently find your belly and let the fingers melt in there, soften your shoulders and your elbows. And feel the belly, feel your own belly, feel its shape. Just notice that you have a belly. Notice the shape of the belly without judgment. We all have bellies, they belong there. Huh. This area is the first and second chakra. The first chakra is supported now on the earth, the lower spine, the sacrum, the coccyphal, releasing into the earth. But you know, you are safe. Picturing perhaps the color red. And then where your hands are softly touching the belly. Getting used to that feeling. Wrapping around and just feeling that um, orange color. It tells you to begin to accept yourself, break in that creativity, creativity or releasing relationships that no longer serve us. So as you're here, please inhale and let the front triangle or pelvis come toward your chin, rolling up. And then exhale and the back triangle just tilts down towards the earth. Inhaling, coming up. It's a gentle, soft movement. Exhale, rolling down. And let it feel good. It shouldn't hurt. It should feel nice. Inhale. Let go at your own pace. Gently rocking. I'm just going to use my hands to show you. Inhaling, up. Exhale. Getting a little lumbar curve on the exhale. Inhale, flattening the lumbar curve a little bit. So inhale, exhale at your own pace. And eventually coming to stillness. And then bring your hands next to you on the earth. And lean over just slightly onto the right hip. And then to the left. You can let the right hip come up a bit. And then move over onto the right hip, lift the left hip just a little bit. So we're unlocking the pelvic floor just a bit. It gets it can get pretty stuck in that area. And if you think about the prana apana vayu, um, that apana being heavy and dense, you want to lift that up and out of there. So if it's stuck, the pelvis um, is gonna it's gonna be stuck. So now bring in a little bit. So bring up yourself onto your right hip just a little. It's a gentle movement. Inhale here. Exhale. And then that back triangle points down, creating a slight lumbar curve. Breathing. Rolling onto the left hip. Another breath here. Ah. And then coming to center and bringing that front triangle so it rocks towards your ribs. And feeling that inner core strength. And then coming to the right, tilting the pelvic triangle in the back down, left. You're making these circles, undulating pelvis, rounding, and breathing, feeling and noticing what that feels like. And then we'll switch directions, coming out to the right hip, coming to center. Bring the pelvis towards the ribs, left, and then coming to the back triangle, tilting the triangle, a little bit of a lumbar curve, and then let those circles continue on your own. 
breathing in and breathing out, picturing um, the rich life force coming in on the inhalation of prana and then on the exhalation. Uh, picture the prana coming in on the inhalation and on the exhale, the up prana just coming up and out of the pelvis, out of the, the murky, dark places that could be there and into the light. The um, apana is related to the feminine aspects, so heaviness can live there, and the um, prana being related to the male aspects. It's all about the wind and the, the flow. And from here, take your um, knees into your hands, just the tops of the knees. You might scoot away from your chair or scoot away from you. And let your um, legs go one way. So circling your knees around, one direction. Give yourself a nice little massage on the lower spine. And then we'll switch directions. So fear and love. You know, um, love is the polar opposite of fear. And where fear is existing, it takes us away from our our loving selves. So releasing fear is, is part of what, what we're kind of working on today. So releasing fear, there's so many yoga postures that can help us with that. But continuing to breathe. Wrap your arms around your legs. Inhale, bring your head up. Hold your breath here for a moment. And on the exhale, let yourself unfurl and bring your feet to the earth. And then bring your hands right next to your hips. And to settle our central nervous system, just tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Push your feet firmly into the earth. And tap, tap on the lower spine, the sacrum. And feel what that is for you to do this. It can be very settling and grounding. And hopefully it feels that way for you. And if it doesn't, um, please don't do it. And then take your hands behind your knees. You'll move your chair away. And just start to rock and roll on your spine. And eventually, we'll come rocking right up to, um, to stand up. And then bring your chair back into your awareness. So I have this little fancy chair, but any chair will do. And then let's sit down on the chair. And your feet should be um, firmly planted on the earth. And mine are a little bit further apart than I might like them. Um, but as long as they're firmly planted on the earth, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then bring your uh, awareness to your big toe mound, pinky toe mound. So you're moving your feet, big toe mound, pinky toe mound. And then to the middle of the um, heel. And finding that triangle right at the foot. So it, it's the, it looks like this. So pink, big toe mound, pinky toe mound, and the heel. And then I have another foot. <laughs> Hopefully you do too. Uh, big toe, pinky toe, and the heel. So, and you can almost relate that to uh, the, the pelvic triangles. If we have a very tight pelvis and our feet are not used as solid earth, uh, solidly on the earth, and then we tighten the jaw, then, then that becomes a very uncomfortable place to be. The core begins right at the arches and comes up through the body and is at the jaw. So here, um, with your feet firmly planted on the earth, let's start to um, undulate again with the hips. I want the upper body to stay relatively stable, and you're just rooting into your sitting bones. Breathe here for a moment, and give this a try, and just let yourself come onto the right hip just slightly, and then front triangle points down, a slight lumbar curve, and then come over to the left or right hip, whichever one you want. And then when you come back to center, let the pelvis tip up. Side, it's your left side. And forward, slight lumbar curve. Side. And then coming back, sucking the pelvis towards your ribs. And then switch directions. Come over to the right hip. Pelvic, pelvic floor tips down. Little lumbar curve. Coming to the left. At center, the pelvis tucks up towards the ribs, and then we go one more time around in that circle. 
And then take a moment to sit with that. Notice what you've noticed. Hmm. Inhale the right arm up and out to the side. And notice that feeling being right in between the shoulder blades, the back of the heart. Inhale and exhale. Rotate from your mid spine right around the thoracic spine. So the hips are pointing forward. And then softly gaze at your palm. Maybe wiggle your fingers just for fun. Yeah, and then we come back to center. Notice your hands on your, on your legs. Breathe in and out. Inhale, right arm out. Slow rotation, it's a gentle spiral. Feeling your thoracic spine, feeling your back body, feeling your ribs. Inhaling and filling the ribs with the rib cage, that, the lungs with oxygen. Ah, we come back to center. Inhale, both arms up. Take a gaze up. What do you need in your life? Breathe in. Ask for it. Draw it into your heart space and exhale. Turn down for a moment. And let all the energy flow into the earth for a moment. Inhale, turn up. Lightness. Prana. Exhale, turn down. And let the upon come into center. And then we'll bring a little levity into practice. You can hold on to one side of the chair. Inhale, reach up and over. So feel the love in your heart. When we feel a lot of fear, and we are people, we are human, fear happens. But can you have a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing? Um, the more open our minds are, to opportunity, to new things, the less we are fearful. A yoga practice gives us the opportunity uh, to, to practice that. And inversions are really nice to, to help with that as well. So we'll be doing some inversions today. And then coming to stillness. And then come on, stand up. You could take the chair and have it right next to you, if you'd like, or you can push it away. That's your choice. I'll just keep it here, just in case. And um, bring yourself into Tadasana. And remember to find those three points on the foot that we just did. So the big toe mount, and really, go over to the big toe mount, see how that feels. Go to the pinky toe, and then come on to the heel, and then rock forward and back. Side to side until you find your center. Align yourself, stacking your joints in a nice, solid foundation. Rooting yourself into the earth, feeling tadasana, feeling strong in this pose. Option to have a hand on the chair if you'd like. Stack your knees over your ankles, your hips over your knees. Shoulders soft and down. Uh, often it weighs here up, back, and down. And that, that kind of gives us this look. It's the ta So let your shoulders just come away from your ears versus um, thrusting them in any direction. Soften your gaze. Soften your whole self. Inhale. Bring in what you need. And that inhalation, imagine feeling it come all the way down to your feet. Exhale from your feet all the way out to the crown of your head. Inhaling, rich life force. Exhaling, what we don't need. Feeling strong in your mountain pose. Mountain feet are always great to help us feel stronger. Step your feet apart. And probably push the chair away at this time. And for a moment, we're going to inhale up. Look up. Gaze up. And then bring your hands together in Padma Mudra, another part chakra, Anahata. Um, mudra. So in Padma, notice by Mudra, and it's almost as if I'm asking. So I'm going to gaze up and ask my angels or whatever is your higher power, the divine essence of love or source, can I please, can I please release what no longer serves me? Can I please bring more joy into my heart and my life? Can I release that stuck stuff that I don't need anymore? Can I please? It's okay to ask. It's okay to ask. It really is. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Bring your hands to your heart center. 
and feel how that is for you. Take a moment to breathe. Ah. And then we'll bring the feet back to mountain feet. And give your hips a little shake. Uh, and then put your hands on your hips. So we're going to continue to do that um, undulating. So it's okay to bend your knees a little bit. So bring your um, right hip out. To stay away from doing this, we just want it to be the, the pelvis that moves. And then um, the back triangle, well, actually, I'm sorry, the front triangle drops a little. Well, there's an arch. And then we come to the left side and then tip the pelvis up. Turn this way, maybe it'll be a little easier to see. Inhale, exhale, feel yourself grounded. Use your breath and let your um, hip come out to the left. Come to center. And then inhale, and then on the exhale, let the front triangle come towards your ribs. Release that. Come to the right center. And then let the, looks like your booty is sticked out a little bit. Don't overdo it, it hurts yourself. And then come to center. So just going in circles. So we'll do two in um, a clockwise direction. It's a subtle movement. Breathing in and out and noticing it. You might have some stuckness there. And then reversing, left, center, tucking up towards the ribs, right, back, left, center, right, back, and then come to center. And then it's almost like you have a hula hoop. It's in motion, lubricate some joints and then go the other way. Ha! Feel what you feel. Okay. So, um, for downward facing dog, you can um, come to the wall. So, I'm going to turn around so you can um, see what I'm talking about. So, I'm going to put my white hands and my fingers spread wide. So, instead of having a downward facing dog on the earth, I'm going to do it on the wall. But the wall is a great place to do it. Get really, really push into the earth, step back, and arms are engaged, hands are, if that wall moved, it, it's holding me up. My feet are, are just like in downward facing dog. The pelvis can, this is not a good way for it to go, sorry to move. <laughs> and tuck it up a little, and then do all the, the regular things you like to do in a downward facing dog. As you're doing that, um, you can bring your wrists together and your armpits apart. That kind of that is wrist together up its apart is a nice little cue to help you do that. And then um, just feel how it is to be in our face and dog against the wall. It's a nice supported way to do it. Um, and if it's any wrist issues, it's also nice. And then shake that out a little bit. And then bring your palms together and clasp your hands this way, bring your elbows together, and then bring them about shoulder height. And breathe here. And then turn around and find your wall. So this is like dolphin, stepping your feet back. And let your head come in between your arms. You can bend one leg and then the other. That feels okay for you. You should feel this in between the shoulder blades. So there's a real nice um, extension. And because I have, I'm not against the wall right now, but when you are, you feel that pressure um, to really hug in to the shoulder blades and let the muscles back there engage, which don't always engage very much. And then um, come away from your wall and come to stillness for a moment. Well, I'm gonna shake it out and then come to stillness. And then grab the chair, still around, and put two hands on your chair. And attempting to bring myself into an L shape. So my feet are apart, hip width distance, softening the knees, extending the arms, wrapping the midline. Neck is long. Inhale and exhale. And then bending the knees. And letting myself hang heavy. Ah. Inhale, extending. Exhale, bend. Inhale, extension. And exhale, supported. Don't try not to let your knees come over your toes. Inhale to extend, wrap to the line, 
Exhale, surrender. Ha. And then come on up to stand. And noticing the different shapes that you can make with your body. So it's just what we're doing is making shapes. And feeling lightness with the heart space. Bring your palms to your heart and just sway a little side to side. I love myself. Bring that love into your heart. Fear. What's this thing that people are afraid to love? Love, everybody loves love. Don't be afraid. But through our yoga practice, we can flow with grace and ease. Let your arms flow to the side. Side to side. Inversions are fun. Let's start with um, coming to the earth to do dolphin pose before we go into the inversion. So it's perfectly great to use the chair um, for dolphin. Um, you can start that way. So you can bring your palms together. Get a nice um, amount of comfort here. And yeah, set your feet back. This is a lot of, um, <laughs> this is probably harder than on the earth. I'm not sure yet. So let's try it the other way. So this chair may not be the best one, so it may be a more firm chair. So bring yourself um, with your hands together, bending your knees, come down into a yogi squat. Gaze in front of you, notice what's there. What is there? And then notice it without judgment. Try to keep that second voice that comes in silent. Come to sit on your heels, if that's accessible to you, and let your palms find your thighs again. Gentle, touch, breathing. Ah. Notice that your heels may be in contact with your sitting bones. And from here, let's start to Rotate the upper body. Let the pelvis be relaxed for a while. And then come the other direction. Ha! Easy. Be nice to yourself. You deserve it. And then come down onto your knees. Knees hip with distance apart. You can curl your toes under or not. It's your choice. You can inhale up. And then exhale, sweep the arms down, come into a child pose. Inhaling up, nice breath, exhale, child pose. Inhale up, exhale, child pose. And then one more, inhale up, and then exhale, come to the wide legged child pose with your toes, touch your knees wide, melt your hips back. Grasp your hands together and melt your head towards the earth. If it doesn't touch, it's okay. You can always stack your fists and block. Ah. And while you're here, breathing into the back heart. So inhale, bring in that life force, expand your belly, expand at the heart space, the back of the heart, the size of the ribs, and exhale, you can dance a little. Balasana, the pose of the child, is a great place to use your breath. Ah. And preparing to, to move, so support precedes action, so pushing into the earth, keeping the hands with grasping your hands, and your elbows are kind of close together as best you can. Coming up onto your toes and slowly straightening your knees, pushing into the dolphin pose. Pushing away from the earth, grasping your hands. Yeah. If your heels touch, they touch. If they don't, they don't. Do um, any one leg and the other. And you might choose to inhale and lift the left leg, point your toe at the leg, and bring it back down. Take a breath here. <sighs> inhale, lift the right leg, point the toe. Exhale, bring it down. And then come onto your knees and come into child pose with your hands in front. Also, the option to bring them here, whatever you want. Take a breath. And then come forward. Come on up to your toes. Straighten your legs with a soft bend. Don't put your knees inside out, don't lock them out. And make, let your hips go side to side here. You could even come onto the outer edge of your foot. 
and right. And coming to center, make sure you're really pushing away. And inhale, left leg comes up. And then exhale down. Inhale, right leg comes up. And exhale down. Breathe here. Breath in, out, in, and out. Ah. Bend your knees. And come to sit on your heels again. And step your right foot in front. And drape yourself over your right leg. Let your left, top of your left foot, really be into the earth. Your knee is over your ankle. And take a moment to settle yourself. Tuck your right hip back and your left hip forward. You can come a little bit forward if you like into this lunge. Take your right hand to your thigh. As you're ready, inhale. Exhale, put you up. Push it into the earth. Palms facing forward. Shoulders are softened, slightly tucking our chins. Breathing in and out. Option to take a slight back bend from the upper back. Huh. Inhale, exhale, turn down. Come back to the earth. Put two hands on the earth and bring the right leg back and the left leg comes in front. And drape yourself over the left leg, preparing to come up, support receiving that action. So pushing the back foot into the earth, the front foot is there, taking the left hand to the left leg, drawing that left hip back. Bring it forward. Inhale. Exhale of your choice. Up. Nice strong pose. Breathing. Gazing ahead of you. Maybe oh, coming a little bit more forward. Huh. Perhaps slight back bend. Maybe. Inhale. Exhale. Turn it. Come back to your knees together. And now you moment to sit back on your feet. Ah. Shake the hands out a little bit. Inversions. So let's try this one today. You know, bring yourself near the wall. And so we we're standing up in an L shape. And we'll be um, upside down in an L shape. If you have high blood pressure, um, don't do this. It feels dizzy. So there's a, um, just a little indication of high blood pressure to be mindful. Bringing the hands to, to the earth and starting with one foot on the wall. So I'm going to adjust to move my mat. Flexible yogi. I'm going to come back to the mat. So I want to find that L shape. My hands are solid, fingers are spread wide, about shoulder distance apart. And one leg comes up, still so close. We're going to move that mat a little more. Spreading the fingers flat. So it, it's handstand is handstand. We're not going to kick right up and do a handstand. We're going to an L shape. But start with putting one foot there, knowing that you can stay this way, it's fine. The other leg. And then eventually give it what you got. Straighten one leg and push your leg into the wall. Two legs. And if you find that you're not the right distance, come right back down. Adjust. <laughs> and I mean, spread your fingers wide. Now you know where you're going. So you can straighten one leg, push this leg solidly into the earth as if you were in Tadasana. And then the other one, except your legs apart. So if you may or may not be in an L shape, and then come on back down. So you can try that a couple of times. Use your breath. Um, use the strength of your arms. But also your feet. So if the wall moved, that would be good. If the floor moved, it probably wouldn't be good. So here's where you trust in yourself. You're letting go of fear. Inversions give us the opportunity to see the world from a different perspective. So when you do that, try it a few times. Um, if that's already in your practice and you got that, Wonderful. If it's not your practice, it's okay. Just keep trying. And then we'll try a um, dolphin uh, headstand where the head really doesn't touch the earth. 
So bring your mat here and put it close to the wall. And a lot of times people like to kick up with these. They try to stay away from that. So we've been using this grip. They have your um, palms <laughs> grasp very firmly and the, the elbows are pretty close together. And here I am, okay? So I'm going to push up into dolphin. I've done that a couple times. Walk as close as you can. Cup your head into your hands. So your head is not going to have any compression. And as you're ready, lift away. And then maybe another lift. And then maybe rock yourself so that you can come up. And take the picture. Let's just bend my knees here. Push your um, forearms into the earth so that you're not leaning on your head. Come up and out of yourself. And maybe you feel like you could do that. And then to come down, come down slowly. Use your strength. Lots of times people, uh, our students will be kicking up into these things and we want to use our core strength. Core strength is good. Try that a couple more times on your own pace. I'm going to do one more with you. And if it doesn't feel comfortable to do this, you know, we all start somewhere. So you may just want to come into Dolphin a couple times. Well, that's interesting. Let's just move this so I can namaste the picture away. <laughs> uh, I still want to light my picture, but I don't want to. So again, it's this grasping, using your breath. Trusting yourself, letting go of fear. We've all been upside down at one time or another. Come into Dolphin Pose slowly. Let your head rest, cupped in your hands. Don't put compression on your head. And maybe it's one leg, maybe two legs, or maybe walk forward and come up. When I get up, I push right up out of my shoulders so that my head is not on the earth. And breathe, ha, ah. and then to come down, it's time I'm going to come into a straddle. Let's slowly come down. Okay, a little faster than I wanted to do it, but I'm going to be okay with that because because I'm okay with it. It's getting past the fear. No fear. It's not painful. There's no game with pain. But when there's no fear, it becomes love in my heart and yours too. Come on and sit down since we're probably all done anyway. <laughs> and take your right leg, your, or your left, cross it over the right. And stack your feet, flex your feet, on your left pose. And notice how your hips feel in this posture. Try to have both sitting bones on the earth. They, they may or may not be there. Breathe, turn your palms up for a moment. <sighs> Breathe here. It's a nice alternative to um, uh, pigeon pose, yeah. Oh, no compression of the hips. And if it, if it feels okay, inhale your arms up. Can I have some more joy? Can I please have some peace in life? I love myself enough. Thank you. With gratitude, hinging forward, long spine, and then soften into the pose. Breathing in and out. Huh. Letting earth support me. I'm feeling this amazing energy coming into the nostrils and a release of stuff, whatever it might be, coming up and out. Yay. Ha. Huh. Tenting fingers and walking up. And then draw your legs long. We'll give them a little shake out. And then switch sides. The left leg coming over the right. So flexing your feet. It's the, trying to have one foot over the knee and the knee over the foot. This can be an accessible pose or not. If you would like a block or a pillow, of course you can use your box. Breathe for a moment. Notice how this side might feel different than the other. Try not to judge that. Root your sitting bones into the earth. Crowd of your head reaches towards the divine. Inhale. Um, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. 
thank you so much for what the gifts that I'm given. Thank you. Gratitude. Exhale. And then come on forward, softening with a long slide first, and then surrendering and rounding the spine. Ah, feel what you feel, notice sensation. Most likely you'll feel this on the outer edges of your thigh and the IT band. If there's any pinching or pain at the hip joint, come right out of it. There's just never any gain of pain. Hmm. And then walk yourself back up. And then bring yourself into easy pose. You know, take the unlock a little bit. So we've been trying to, to kind of unlock the hips and the thoracic. So let's do um, this way, pushing out. So inhale, arms away, exhale now. Inhale up, exhale down. Push, push, push. So the push is from the upper spine, not the lower spine. Inhale, exhale, from the thoracic spine. Come to center. Inhale, exhale, thoracic spine, the back of your heart. Try to keep the lumbar spine neutral. Cross the other leg in front. Grasping. Inhale. Exhale, upper spine. Get some strength there. And then come back to center one more time. Inhale, push away. Come back to center. I feel pretty darn good. I hope it's up there for you. Bring your legs into a V shape. Flex your feet. Have nice, strong legs. Inhale, and let's just have some nice circles with the upper body, keeping the spine long. In the head in alignment. Ha! Huh. Some lightness, some levity. It isn't all that serious. Yoga should be some fun. It should, you should love it. And no fear. And then turn the other way. Sometimes being, um, you know, sitting in our discomfort is, is one thing. It's different than being afraid. Yoga teaches us to endure that which we cannot cure. I don't know who said that, but I, I remember. And then we'll come back to the center. And then bring your legs together. And take your left hand or your right, doesn't matter, you do both. And find the back of your neck at the occipital ridge. And then bring your hand to the front of your head, the forehead. Inhale and exhale, draw up the back of your neck. To tuck the chin in. This is a great way to um, settle the vagal, it's for vagal tone. It's also a nice way to settle the nervous system. We did a lot of rock and rolling and upside down. You just notice how this feels to you. Ah, and then you can switch. And the other hand behind. You can even bring your head down and your hand into your forehead. To notice the difference as you push up on the occipital ridge and then your elbows are out. You just breathe here. Opening up the back of the neck. Trying to undo some of that texting neck pain. And then draw both arms up, look up. Yes, looking up, I just, oh, I'm feeling like so joyful. I'm letting go of fear. And I'm embracing the love, coming into a forward fold, feet are flexed, long spine. The goal is not to bring your head down to your knees, it's just to be nice and long with your spine, and then surrender and soften and round. Oh, maybe sway a little bit. Make your yoga practice feel loving, gentle, kind, and a little challenge is, is wonderful to get rid of fear. You know, fear and love, they, they just don't go together. So bring the love into your heart and let the fear vanish. It's our thoughts that create um, what something is. Walk yourself back to center. So without the thoughts, you know, life just is. It simply is. It isn't good or bad, it just is. Our thoughts 
attach any motion to it. Put your feet into the air, counterpose that, and push those hips up. Shrug your shoulders up if you'd like, and sway side to side. Wonderful. And then uh, bring your hands behind your knees. Yeah. Go ahead and rock them on your spine once again. And if shoulder stand is in your practice, you can go right ahead into plow. And if it's not, just continue to rock along your spine. You can rock into a yeah, semi-shoulder stand and then let your feet up there. And then roll down and put your feet on the earth. And from here, ha, put your hands on your belly. And then you can elongate your legs and come on into a Shavasana. I highly recommend putting a blanket on. Um, so get into your Shavasana position. Get as comfortable as you possibly can um, to sit up. And, and allow yourself this time in Shavasana to be, to simply be. Allow the entire back body to be heavy on the earth, heavy and sinking and melting into the earth. The front body surrenders into the back body. As your breath continues, you continue to inhale and exhale. The rise of the belly brings in that fresh prana, the wind of life. And then the exhale, the belly falls. It's almost as if we're pushing out the stuck stuff. The prana. Inhale and exhale. Feel your head heavy on the earth. Crown of head heavy, eyes are heavy. Notice your eyes and your sockets just kind of resting, resting. And noticing your left ear and your right ear, just hearing sounds in your home, sounds, just noticing sounds. Notice the sounds in your inner landscape, the sound of your breath, the sound of your tender breathing. Notice as you breathe in and out. Notice texture and temperature of the oxygen, the prana. Allow the jaw to soften. Lips can gently part. Shoulders surrender. Your right arm heavy and relaxed. Full body resting in stillness. Full back body. Notice where your back body is touching the mat, heavy and lighter. Notice how your heart is open to possibility, to hope, and to love. You can walk with an open heart because you have your own back. Both hips heavy. We've got enough work tonight. <laughs> heavy hips, the right leg heavy and light. And then the left. Let your whole body settle into the stillness. It's when we look backwards at what we did that we can get sad. And when we, our thoughts race forward to what's coming next, it, it can cause anxiety, especially if we don't breathe. But give yourself a gift to stay present in this moment. This moment is the one that will keep you happy. That's where joy and bliss exists in the moment with your breath. Breathe in and breathe out. You might notice your whole self drifting away. It's perfectly fine. Give yourself permission to do whatever you do at your last night. There's really no right or wrong way to do it. Slowly bring your awareness to your physical body. Notice your body, your bones, your muscles, all the things that make up the body, the physical body. And then notice your mind, your thoughts, if you're thinking. Just notice a thought, don't attach to it, just let it. Let it be a thought. You know, maybe you're happy. Maybe you're sad. Maybe you're tired. But try not to attach an internal mantra to that. Just let it be as it is. 
Notice your energy. How has your energy changed during our practice today? If at all, maybe attaching a color to your energy, a sparkly color that encircles your body from head to toe. Notice your breath, always noticing the breath and the anchor you keep you safe. Calm. And then notice your connection to each other, our connection. Notice your connection to yourself, because you're loving yourself. And maybe in your mind is like, I'm loving yourself. And let that be something that you say over and over. If you already love yourself, Great. If you're falling in love with yourself, great. If it's a suggestion, great. Continue to feel that love for yourself. The closer we come to this love, the farther and farther away we get from here, which blocks us. So wrap that all up in a blanket or cocoon, then begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. Reach your arms up over your head. Roll your head side to side. Just make any movements that feel good to you. And please roll over to your right or left side using your bottom arm as your pillow. Let your top arm rest on your heart space for a moment. Take in anything that felt right for you, that brought love into your world, into your awareness during that practice. And allow anything that felt wrong or didn't resonate with you to just fall away. And maybe just let some of the fear of life just drop into the earth. The earth will take it for us. Please take your hand from your heart, push it into the earth, and come on up to a seated position. Take your time. Once you get to seated, allow your sitting bones to find the earth solid and holding us always. Shoulders fall away from the ears. The spine elongates. The crown of the head reaches up towards that essence of source, divine source. Let me tuck the chin. Soften your gaze. Breathe in here. Inhale and take your second and third finger to the middle of the forehead. The thumb and the fourth finger will close and open the nostrils. And, and make sure that you use the upper part of the nostril, not the flat part. So these two fingers are centered on the third eye, closing the right nostril or the left. Let's do inhale right, exhale right. Closing the left, closing the right. Inhale left, exhale left. Closing left, inhale right, exhale right. Closing right, inhale left, exhale left. Go ahead and do three more rounds of that on your own. Breathing in, out. And when you finish, let your palms fall face up. Your body. And then as your palms are face up, have them come face down, palms facing down, and notice that gentle touch that might have felt vulnerable in the beginning of our practice. And maybe it feels a little more loving and kind. And maybe it doesn't. Don't judge. Don't judge. Please don't judge. You are enough. Inhale your arms out to the side. Exhale to Padma Lotus Flower Mudra. Let your pinkies and thumbs touch. Open your lotus flower as your shoulders settle. You gaze softly into those palms. The darkness can represent that stuck prana that we probably lose all of it. And the light can represent the prana, that light feeling, that airy, spacious feeling. Dark and light can exist in the same plane. Counterposing. The answers to most things are in our hands. We make our own choices. And those that we don't, we still have this choice to react in the way that we know is best. 
Come. Bring your hands together. Let your thumbs find your third eye. Circle the thumbs one way and then the other. Lokar Samasta Suki no Bhavati. Please, everybody everywhere, be happy, be free, be loving and kind. No more pain and suffering. There's a beautiful divine light in you that sees and loves the beautiful divine light in you. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.